In 2017, a refugee with no educational degree who started out as a Tonga Wala became the highest paid CEO of an Indian FMCG company taking the salary of 21 crores. I am talking about the late Mahashay Dharampal Gulati ji, the founder of MDH Masalas. In this video, I am going to tell you his inspirational story and how a common Indian man leveraged multiple marketing principles and built out a 2000 crore global company. MDH's story starts in 1919 when Lal Gulati, Dharampal ji's father, set up a small spice shop in Sialkot, a city which is a part of modern day Pakistan. Dharampal ji wasn't really fond of studies, so he dropped out of school in 5th standard and tried to start multiple small time businesses of his own, like his Mehendi, mirror, soap, he even did a carpentry job. But when none of those took off, he joined his father in selling spices. When the India Pakistan partition was announced, Dharampal ji and his family had to leave everything behind, including their spice business, and they arrived in Amritsar as refugees. Dharampal ji eventually left for Delhi and became a Tonga Wala there. But ferrying people around wasn't bringing him much money and he wanted to go beyond the hand-to-mouth existence and make more money. So in 1948, he took a decision that would change his fate forever. He decided to put together all the money and resources he had to start a business he understood best. Spices. Now you can imagine, right? This was right after the partition. There was a serious crisis going on in India. Unemployment, rampant inflation, and scarcity of basic food. But amidst all this chaos, Gulati ji had the guts to take this extremely risky call. But I also feel that's what entrepreneurship is all about, right? It's a high risk, high reward game. You have to have the courage to go into completely uncharted territory and take a risk without a guarantee of success. And that's what he did. He sold his Tonga and bought a small 14 feet by 9 feet shop on Ajmal Khan Road in Karol Bagh in Delhi and started his family business of ground spices, Mahashia the Hatti or MDH as we know it today. But what is it that made MDH grow from this tiny Karol Bagh shop to reaching 50 million customers globally in a year? Well, I believe it's a combination of three things he did and I'm going to take you through it in this video. So when Dharampal ji set up his spice shop in Delhi, a lot of adulterated spices were being sold in the market. They would make sand, chana and whatnot in spices basically scamming the consumers. Now, Dharampal ji was also aware of this and he also had the option to go ahead and do this and make the same spices and sell it at a 2-3% to lower cost and make money for himself. But he did quite the opposite. He literally made quality the ethos of his company. Did it eat into his profits margins? Of course, it did. So how did he make his business survive? So I'll give you this one example, okay? When I was putting together my very first PC, I found that there is one road in Bangalore called SP Road, where you can find multiple shops selling multiple computer parts, super cheap. And each shop will try to sell the products cheaper than the previous shop. Now, every two years I'd go there and the previous shop would shut down and a new store would be in place of the previous one. So there's one thing I realized from this. Every time you run a business and you play this lower margins game, your business will eventually die out because the next guy is going to come and probably sell it 20 rupees cheaper than you and your consumer will happily go there. So in almost every consumer good products, there's a margin race to the bottom. Oh, you're going to sell it for 50 rupees? I'm going to sell it for 40 rupees. But this is very short term thinking. Now, these shopkeepers are small time business owners and they don't really think long term. But Dharampal ji, back in 1940s, had the business acumen to understand this. He was like, in a world of scammers, I am going to go completely ham on quality. Vendors adulterated the spices to increase their margins, but he was not even thinking about these short term margins. He understood the concept of brand. And that if you build this brand around trust, that itself has value and the value in itself serves as a margin. Sure, yeah, your customers can purchase masala packets from a random vendor for one rupees lesser, but the chances of them finding a cockroach in that masala packet versus MDH masalas is also much higher. So the human brain, right, it works on loss aversion. So a consumer will rather spend that one rupees extra to get that assurity of not finding a cockroach and get a good quality product. So Dharampal ji sourced the best raw materials, did everything from grinding to packing to shipping himself, making sure the product was top notch. It was also very important to him that these customers kept coming back to him again and again for a repeat purchase 
because large businesses are built through retaining customers not constantly finding new customers so there's actually this term that startups now use to measure this it's called customer lifetime value so i keep getting ads for these energy bars okay i finally clicked on this one ad and bought it the brand would have probably spent around 200 to 300 rupees to make me click on that ad and buy that energy bar but the quality of that energy bar was so good i literally buy it every week so my lifetime value as a customer to that brand is now 10000 rupees for the 300 rupees they spent on me so for any of you starting out always think of how you're going to retain your customer and keep getting them back dharmpal ji did it through quality and trust असली मसाले सच सच Now in the 1950s these spice makers were selling their spices in those loose packets again because it was cheaper and easier for them but you know what MDH did they decided to create these ready to use packets and cardboard packaging and printed the words hygiene full of flavor and tasty highlighting the brand message across out and clear and sold their spices in that now think about it would you buy the 10 rupees masala in that loose packet or will you buy this nice looking fancy packaging for 11 rupees dharampal ji knew that packaging is an essential part of creating brand equity and this also helped him gain the first mover advantage in the market in fact on one of dharampal ji's visits to bombay he saw a very nicely done spices store so when he returned to delhi he also opened the very first spices shop in delhi with very similar looking interiors what i'm trying to explain is it was not just packaging of their product he was packaging a seamless customer experience across every touch point with the customer whether it was the product the packet his delivery or his spices store ye kiska dukaan hai main dikhta nahi hai kya masale ka dukaan hai ye kiska dukaan hai dikhta nahi hai kya मसाला का दुकान है ये किसका दुकान है ये मसाले का दुकान है The third thing was advertising. So MBH business was flourishing in Delhi. He had found the product market fit. Now he wanted to make sure that his masalas reach every house possible. He realized that if he wanted to make his brand popular, people had to know about it. So he leveraged all the accessible modes of communication to get consumers attention starting with newspapers. He advertised his masalas for the very first time in a vernacular newspaper called Pratap and it worked. He started getting orders from all across the country and this also kickstarted the rich and spicy MDH masalas advertising journey which was way ahead of its time. You know, MDH has one of the strongest brand recalls in this cluttered market. and it's because his face is forever etched in our minds and the moment someone says asli masale such such you can't help but sing the tune in your mind i'm pretty sure you sang it just now and i'll tell you the funny thing about this it all happened by chance so once while shooting a tv commercial for mdh the actor who was playing the role of the father's bright for the commercial failed to show up and dharampal ji was like okay you know what i'll do it so he took up the role and ever since then he has appeared in all mdh commercials oi aaj hamara ad ke liye salman aur sharukh ko leke aao sir sir wo abc and ko wo salman aur sharukh ko leke aa rahe hai ad ke liye hum kisko leke aayenge main huna as a part of indian culture we are always taught to respect our elders for their experience and wisdom so endorsing the elderly image of dharampal ji also greatly shaped the consumer perception in favor of mdh mdh also stood for hard work ingenuity and perseverance of gulati ji and because we felt like we could trust gulati ji we felt like we could trust mdh you know another company that has been a massive success because of the same strategy take a guess it's patanjali The primary reason people started buying Patanjali products was not for their quality or anything. It was because they trusted Ramdev Baba. Now, as we have seen, 
MDH has never shied away from experimentation. As MDH masalas were slowly becoming known across various states, Dharam Palji wanted MDH to get in every single kitchen in India, from Kashmir to Kanyakumari. He noticed when people cook, they generally mix different different single ground spices like mirchi, garam masala to create the final dish. So he was like, what if I give them the final mix? So they came up with the blended spices formula. Pav bhaji masalas, rajma masalas, chicken masalas and it was a huge success. The people of UP started cooking pav bhaji, a traditional food of Maharashtra, more frequently. And this also helped them tap into newer markets. Like they could target Karnataka with their sambar masalas. This newfound love for tasting pan-India cuisines prepared at home was a major push for MDH to gain nationwide popularity. As of 2020, the company brought in 2,000 crores as operating income and 420 crores as net income. MDH is now the second largest producer of spices with a market share of 12% and they export to over 100 countries worldwide and have a number of overseas offices including in Dubai and London. Mahashaji has truly helped India climb ladders of success and fame at the global level. In 2019, he also received the Padma Bhushan from the President and the Government of India. He passed away on December 3rd, 2020, but his legacy still remains. There is so much we can all learn from his journey, and not just as a businessman, but as an individual, he has done so much for the society, from setting up schools, hospitals. You know, he used to give 90% of his salary to charity. He was an exemplary man, and we'll always remember him as the MDH Dadaji.